Okay, welcome back. Now I'm going to be talking about image formation with a spherical lens. What are the equations for image formation for spherical lens? And then I'll show you the demo and then we'll calculate the theoretical and then compare it with the experiment, right? So we have an object here. I'm going to use a light bulb as the object. Then I'm going to have a spherical lens. The distance between the light bulb and the lens I can call uh, D, right? And then uh, I'm going to measure the radius of curvature of the spherical lens, the radius of the lens. Then I'm going to find out where the best image is. Uh, I put a screen here where the location of the best image. So this is DO, this is DI, right? And then I can use the equations to calculate the expected uh, image distance, right? And then I can compare with my experimental, okay? So let's uh, show you the video of this. Okay, so here's my spherical lens. Here's the light source, right? I'm going to put the spherical lens about the same height as the light source. Then I'm going to produce an image over there. Okay, so I've got the lens 10 centimeters away. The center of the lens is 10 centimeters away from the light bulb. Then I adjust my length of the, the distance of the paper. I can see the best image forming right about here. So my center of my uh, lens is at the 30 centimeter mark and the best image is at the 36 centimeter mark. 30 and 36. Okay, now you can tell there's also another image that appears on the front end here, a small little image. The back image on the screen is inverted, but the image that we are seeing here is right side up. So we can also calculate what that is. The image that you see in the lens right here, the right side up small image. Okay. My uh, light bulb was at the 20 centimeter mark, my lens was at the 36 centimeter mark, and then this was 36 uh, centimeter, right? So, okay, my DO was equal to uh, 10 centimeters, and then my DI experimental was 6 centimeters, okay? But then there was also another image that was visible while looking at it from here, and that one was right side up, but this image was inverted, okay? Okay, in order to do spherical lenses, this is kind of tricky, they're trickier, because we can't use the thin lens equation. The thin lens equation is one over DO plus one over DI is equal to one over F, and then one over F equals N minus one, one over R1 minus one over R2. So we can't use that equation for uh, lenses that are thick. So for spherical lenses, we have to use this equation. The N1 over DO plus N2 over DI is equal to N2 minus N1 over the radius of curvature. Okay, so the way we do it is we do one surface of the lens at a time. So this one is standing in front of a spherical lens, right? Imagine this spherical lens, but forget the backside of the lens. Assume that this lens uh, continues forever, okay? The N2 is the index of refraction of the glass medium, right, of the glass medium, but imagine that it goes forever, that's equal to 1.52, and then N1 is the index of refraction where the object is in, so that would be uh, air in this case, 1.0, then you take the difference of the two, and then that gives you the, the expected image distance of the, of the front side of the lens, okay? So you do one, one image at a time. So in my case, the index of fraction N1 is gonna be one. DO is gonna be what? Well, from the uh, light bulb to the middle of the lens was 10 centimeters, right? But in this equation, the DO is measured from the object all the way to the front of the lens. That's also another tricky part. It uh, doesn't go to the center of that lens, right? So, uh, you have to count from here all the way to the front edge. So I have to measure now the radius of curvature of my lens, okay, with the vernier. So I put my lens here. The radius of curvature of the lens is uh, 5.8 centimeters, so the radius of curvature is gonna be 2.9 centimeters, okay? So then we take the 2.9 and we subtract it from uh, 10 centimeters, right? Because here from here to the center was 10. So 10 minus 2.9 and that's going to give you what? 7.1 centimeters. So my DO is going to be 7.1 plus 
and 2 is the index of refraction of the glass, 1.52 over di. That's going to, and then you're going to uh, subtract them, 1.52 minus 1 over the radius of curvature, 2.9. Now you calculate where the expected image is from the front side of the lens, okay? It might actually be in the lens, which means it will form a real image here, or it might be that it forms a virtual image on the left side of the lens. So it depends if DI is negative. If DI is negative, that means the, the light rays came, they were not able to bend in time, and then they formed an image here. That would be a virtual image if DI is negative. If DI is positive, it's, it says that it formed an image in, in the lens itself, which we're, exp uh, we're assuming goes forever, right? So then let's calculate what DI is. 1.52 over DI is, uh, this is gonna be 0.52 over 2.9 minus one over 7.1. It's up that DI is positive, and it's gonna be 39.5 centimeters, 39.5. That means it was able to bend the light rays and it actually formed the, the image in the glass itself, right? 39 centimeters from where? From the front end of the spherical uh, lens, right? From the front end. So it went like this, all the way, somewhere here, it formed the um, inverted image. But that image will actually never form. This is in case this went on forever. If it went on forever, it, uh, it would have formed an image inside of the glass, 39.5 centimeters from the front edge of the uh, sphere. So that image, which never actually formed, it would have been a real image, right, if it formed. It never actually formed, so that image acts as a virtual object for the back side of the lens, for this, this, this side of the lens, right? So it's 39.5, so I'm going to use the same equation now. N1 over DO plus N2 over DI is equal to N2 minus N1 over, um, over R. Okay, so now there's a lot of tricky things here to make sure you do correctly. Otherwise, you get the answer really wrong. Okay, so then we're going to ask ourselves, what's N1, what's N2, what's DO, what's DI, and then what's R? So everything has to be correct here. To, uh, for the back side of the lens, right? So this image, which would have been a real image had the glass gone on forever, is going to act as a virtual object for this side of the lens, okay? So then what's going to be N1? N1 is going to be the index of refraction of the medium where that image would have formed. That you know, image would have formed in glass, right? So N1 would be 1.52, okay? So I'm gonna erase this top one. So N1 would have been 1.52. What's, what's uh, the DO gonna be? The DO is gonna be the distance from there all the way to the back side of the lens, okay? So the 39.5 is measured from the front end over here, right? So what is this distance? That would have, that's gonna be the DO. So then I'm gonna to have to subtract from 39.5, I'm gonna to have to subtract the, uh, the diameter of the lens, which is 5.8. Remember the diameter was 5.8? So 39.5 minus the diameter is 5.8, so that's gonna be 33.7. DO is 33.7. Right? So it's the distance to the back side of the lens. But here's another tricky thing. It's negative 33.7 because that image never actually formed. It would have been a real image had it formed in a glass that lasted forever. But since it never formed, it acts as a virtual object for the back side of the lens. So it's a negative 33.7, right? Then I'm going to go plus N2. What's N2? And two is where the final image is going to form. I'm going to assume the final image is going to form in air, right? Because now that uh, the light rays are coming, refracting from the backside of the lens, and then forming into air. Now that doesn't guarantee that it will form in air, but the, you put the equation as if it's going to form in air. So N two is going to be an index of refraction of air, one over di. Okay. So then 
when you do this, 1 minus 1.52, right? You're going to do the, that order. So instead of 1.52 minus 1, you're doing 1 minus 1.52. 1 minus 1.52. So you see how many things you have to get correct. Here you have to get the correct index of fraction. Here you got to get the correct distance. The correct, if it's a virtual uh, object, then negative. Then here, correct uh, index of refraction of 1. Then you subtract the correct order. It's the expected index of refraction of where it's expected to form minus where the image is coming from, which would have come from glass. So 1 minus 1.52 divided by the radius of curvature of this side of the lens, which is to the left of it. So what is that? That's going to be 2.9, but negative 2.9. My gosh, this is tricky, right? Why negative 2.9? Well, for lenses, when the radius of curvature is on the right side, we put positive. For when the radius of curvature is on the left side, we put negative, right? So even for the thin lens equation, we have uh, we have uh, n minus one, one over r one minus one over r two. So if the radius of curvature of this side is over here, this one is always going to be negative. So it's going to be negative if if it's exactly identical to the first one, it's going to be negative r one then you're going to end up adding them, right? So by convention, if the lens has a radius of curvature on the left, you put negative. So you put another negative here, then you're going to get the final image correct, right? So you've got to do a lot of things correctly. So now let's see what that answer comes out, right? And then you're going to get here a point. So where's the image? 4.5 centimeters from this side of the lens this way from the back side of the lens, right? When we do it this way, the DIs and the DOs are always measured from the, either the front side of the lens or the back side of the lens, right? So it's 4.5 centimeters, and it's a real image, right? And it forms 4.5 centimeters from the back side of the lens. Now, what did we get? We got six centimeters from the lens to the middle of the sphere, right? From the image to the middle of the sphere. So now, my DI experimental, if I want to measure it from the back side, uh, of the uh, sphere, I subtract 2.9 from this, right? So subtract 2.9, you're gonna get 3.1. So I'm actually pretty close, right, to the expected answer here. 3.1. Okay, so then you're gonna get here uh, the percent error, 100% times 3.1 minus 4.5 over 4.5 is the expected answer. So I'm actually pretty glad about that answer because when I got the sphere, I was just holding it in my hand. I didn't know the exact center of the sphere. And then I was uh, doing the screen with my hand also. So it was kind of hard to determine the location, but I estimated them. And even with that, I got a very good answer. So we're going to get your one, about 30% error. Not bad for the calculations, right? What's going to be the magnification of that image? Okay. Expected magnification. So then we have your negative di over do one times negative di over do two, right? So what was my first di? My first di was 39.5, right? 39.5 over do. My first do was my first do was 10 centimeters minus 2.9, so 7.1 times negative, now here you gotta be careful, there's a lot of negatives. What was my next DI? My next DI was uh, the 4.5, but it was positive, right? 4.5, what was my DO2? My DO2 was negative 33.7, right? So then you have negative 33.7. So then the two negatives cancel, right? And then you get negative. So the expected image is that it's inverted. And it was inverted, right? It is inverted. And then it was, uh, let's see if it's going to be bigger or smaller. So we have here. So the expected uh, image magnification is that it's about 75% of the size of the light bulb. And it was actually. It was smaller than the light bulb. Okay, so it's pretty reasonable by uh, three quarters. And uh, it was also inverted. Now, what was the image that we were seeing on the front end? Okay. It wasn't actually this one, the 33.7. The 33.7 would have been the image that formed there. The image that was forming from the front end is the lens is acting as a mirror. Okay, it's acting as a mirror and uh, it's acting as a, a convex mirror, right? So we're seeing the reflection of the convex mirror. 
So we're just you, uh, you have the object like this, and imagine there's a convex mirror right here, because when light refracts through the glass, it also partially reflects. And so the, it goes like this, like this, and it forms an image inside of the glass that is smaller than itself, right? With, like any convex mirror would. So what would be the equation for that? 1 over the O plus 1 over the I is one, uh, 2 over the radius of curvature of the mirror, right? So we can use the equation for the radius of curvature of mirrors, the equation for mirrors, right? And then so what would my DO be? My DO would be the 7.1, and then my over 1 over DI, and then 2 divided by the radius of curvature. So what's the radius of curvature? 2.9. But now, for mirrors, because the sphere is acting as a mirror here, the mirror, the radius of curvature is here. When the radius of curvature of the mirror is on the right, now it's a negative, because mirrors are supposed to reflect light, not let them through, right? So when the image is found on this side, and when the center of curvature of the mirror is found on the right side, now it's a negative. So we put here 2 over negative 2.9. So 1 over 7.1, 1 over di, 2 over negative 2.9 because it's on the it's on the right side. So you see, act, if it when it acts like a lens, its radius of curvature is positive if it's on this side. But when it acts as a mirror, its radius of curvature is negative. So 1 over the i is going to be negative 2 over 2.9 minus 1 over 7.1. So let's see what we get here. Centimeters. And when it's negative, it's a virtual image formed by a mirror. That means it's on the right side of the mirror like this. So if this is 7.1, this thing is 1.2. Well, it's expected to be smaller than the image then. So you see it's a right side up, and it's also smaller than the image by quite a bit. So the magnification is negative di over do, uh, negative, uh, negative 1.2 over do 7.1. So you see the two negatives cancel each other, and the magnification of the mirror portion is going to be positive. So one, so which image is larger? Well, the magnification of the, the, the image on the back side due to refraction of light is three quarters of the, uh, the light bulb. This one is 20%, 17 to 20% of the light bulb. So it's a lot smaller, as you can see in the video, and, but it's right side up, right? So it's a very, very good problem. You can see a lot of things that you have to do correctly, okay? Now I'm gonna do, what if this whole thing was immersed in water? Right? What's going to happen? The light bulb, everything else stays the same. Where is the expected location of the final image? But now it's all immersed in water. You have a source of light, you have a sphere in water, and where is the final image going to be? Now, it might be that the final image most likely probably is going to form a lot further, or it might act, act, not actually form over here. It might actually not be able to bend the light rays. Now, reason why is because glass's index of refraction is not that much stronger, not that much bigger than water. So when the light rays come in and they're bending, they don't bend as much. So if they do bend from here and here, if they do bend enough, they, they're going to form an image here, but not that close to the uh, lens. You'll form an image way, way, very far away from the lens. Or it might not bend enough, and it might actually form a virtual image on the left side here, if it, this is in water. So one day I'll probably do this demo in water. I'll be with my scuba diving device. I'll have a light bulb and I'll have a sphere and I'll make the video in water so you can see, compare them. So how do we change the equations? This is gonna be 1.33, the index of refraction of water. Over DO was 7.1, this was glass. Okay, and then the radius of curvature was 2.9. This I'm doing this on the left side, for the left side of the lens, right? Let's find out where the image from the left side would have been if the glass went on forever. So, you see what happened? Very different than from air to glass. We have water here, and you have the light source, and we have the glass going on forever. But if this is water and this is glass, what this is saying, the light rays won't be able to bend as much. They will not converge over here. And it will look like the image is forming somewhere here. That image will never form. It's a virtual image, right? But these light rays will not actually be able to converge in the glass. And they will look like they're forming an image in the water, right? 
And so it'll be 12 and a half centimeters to the left of the front edge of the glass. 12 and a half centimeters. So now what's going to happen? That image never actually uh, forms. It's a virtual image. But then these light rays go and then they go through the, the second, the back side of the lens. And then they form and then they uh, refract outward. Let's see if the final image forms on the right side or if it's if the final image is, is, uh, is on the left side, right? So what's actually happening is that you just have basically an object like this and then you have a sphere and then you have water, you have water, and then the light rays are coming, they're trying to bend, they're trying to uh, bend uh, towards the center like this, towards the normal line, right? but they're not able to actually converge in the glass. Then they bend out from the normal line. Okay. And then so my question is now, do they actually converge here or not? Okay, so now let's do the second part of the equation, but remember there's a lot of things we have that are tricky in the second part. So we got it. Take that all into account. So N1 is going to be, the now the image is coming from glass. Now you might say the N1 should be maybe water, right? And N2 should be water. Well, if this is water and water, and then you, you subtract them, you're going to get zero, right? Because remember, the image would have formed in water here, but you shouldn't do that. The, the image is coming from glass. Even though it never actually formed in the glass, the N1 should still be in the index of refraction of the glass. All right, so then this is going to be 1.52. You can't put here 1.33, 1.33, and 1.33 minus 1.52. It doesn't work, okay? So you have to put the images coming from the glass, even though it never actually formed in the glass. You have to put the index of refraction of the glass. Now what's going to be the O? Now the image is on the left of the, the back side of the lens, so it act, uh, the, it's a virtual image, but it acts as a real object. It's a virtual image acting as a real object, right? So the distance here would be what? This is going to be uh, 12 and a half centimeters from this side. So then it's going to be 12 and a half. Oh, actually, uh, I drew the picture wrong here. If the image distance is 12 and a half, it's actually behind the object. It actually looks like the image is like this. It's going like that. So this is going to be 12 and a half from here to here. From here to here is 12 and a half. Then we add to that the diameter of the glass, 5.8. So we get 13, 1, uh, 13, 1, uh, 3, 18, 18.3 from the back side of the lens. And it's a virtual image that acts as a real object because the light rays are actually going, they look like they're going, they're, they look like they're starting from here. And they're going like this, and then now we're going to see if this one is able to bend them. So this lens, the back side of the lens, actually thinks there is an object there. So it's acting as a real object. Okay? So then we're going to do here, it's coming from glass, 1.52, and then the O is going to be 18.3. Okay? So not negative, but positive 18.3. Plus the index of refraction of water over the eye. And then N2, 1.33 minus 1.52. So again, you're going to do the index of refraction of where it's going to end up, the expected location of where it ends, ends up, minus the, where it's coming from, 1.52. And then the radius of curvature is negative 2.9 again, for the same reason, right? Negative 2.9. Okay, so BI comes out negative 75.8 centimeters. That means it's not able to converge the image here. It tried very hard, but it wasn't able to. So it ends up that the final image is way over here. On the left side, it's going to be a very enlarged image. So the person looking with their eye here, what are they going to see? Well, are they going to see this first image that we used as an object for the second one? They're not really going to, right? Because this image would have only existed if this lens went on forever. If the lens went on forever, then you would have had an image there. But of course, in this case, it doesn't go on forever. So this thing disappears. So in other words, that first image, we only used it as a tool. 
We only used it as a tool to determine where the image would have been if it went on forever. And we found out that it wouldn't have been in the glass. Then we, we used it as if it is in the glass, right? Then uh, we put it in this equation and then we got negative 75.8. So now if you put your eye here, that's the only image you see, the final image, which is gonna be all the way to the left here, negative 75.8 centimeters from the, from the right side of the lens, right? From here to here, from the right side of the lens, 75.8 centimeters. So it's gonna be a very enlarged image. So what's gonna be the magnification of that image? So quite tricky stuff, right? Magnification, negative di over do1, negative di over do2. So then you're gonna have negative, my first di was equal to negative 12 and a half. My do was equal to 7.1. So that those two negatives cancel. Right? Then I have negative, and then my second uh, di is equal to negative 75.8. And then my uh, second do is equal to positive 18.3. The two negatives cancel. So the final image that this person sees is a virtual upright image, and its magnification should be pretty large. 7.3. The image is going to be enlarged. The light bulb image is going to be enlarged 7.3 fold. It's going to be a very huge image, right? Because since the sphere was in the water, it wasn't able to bend it. And it looks like the image is way over here and it's acting like a magnifying lens, okay? So you can see here uh, how this works. Quite tricky stuff. You have to master the use of the N1, the N2, the N2 minus N1, the R, when is it negative, when is it positive, and then treating each side of the lens as infinite, right? And then assuming that that's going on forever, right? So the reason that why we assume that this uh, second image is coming from glass is because when we do this side of the lens, we're assuming that this lens is infinite this way also. Just like the left side of the lens, we assume it goes on forever, the right side of the lens, we assume it goes on forever also. So even though that uh, image would have formed in water from the first one, but we're assuming that, that the glass is going forever, so it's coming from glass. So that's why this part is a kind of tricky, that we put the index of refraction of glass, because we treat it as going forever, okay? So now you can see how to do these kinds of problems, and you can actually see the demonstration in air, compare the two, and we got a good answer, okay? Thank you very much.